Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NECC. It is Overwatch Wednesday, and I could not be more excited to be here. I tell you what, some of you guys, I live in the Midwest, and we have dropped temperatures, and it's about 30 degrees where I live. But tonight, it's even colder here inside of the NECC, because right underneath me in that box is the main man. Connor Breeze is in the building. What's up, my guy? Not much. Living the dream. You know how it goes. That's right, man. That's right. Hey, and do we have a matchup tonight? Carroll University comes in here to face Northern Essex Community College. Man, we have a matchup straight ahead. For sure, for sure. Especially on the map Havana, which will be the first map tonight. It looks like it's going to be a fantastic map uh, for some of the DPS players that we've seen in this uh, in this league so far. You know, Freaky Jay's had a time of his life on that first point on defense. You know, we've seen some good widow plays from him coming out of the gate. So I'll be very, very interested to see, you know, how things move forward in the beginning of this map. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we want to remind you that you can follow us on social media at NECC Games. Again, that's NECC Games for on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and you're going to want to check that out. And right now, Connor, all roads lead to the NECC playoffs as it's just right around the corner. Oh, it's coming up very, very quickly. You know, we're going to have some big matches very soon for the playoffs. You know, teams are going to be fighting tooth and nail to take those top spots. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of that and getting ready for those playoffs, we want to – I made the announcement last night on stream, but now the NECC playoffs will be live on our linear TV partner, ESTV. Again, ladies and gentlemen, ESTV now available on Samsung TV Plus, the Roku channel, Vizio, and plenty of options for you to download their platform and catch esports action from around the globe 24 7, including the NECC playoffs. It is a fun time to be involved in collegiate esports. I tell you what, as a scene, you got to love what's happening in college Overwatch right now, Connor. For sure, for sure. You know, there's a lot of very good things going on. You know, it's just growing as, you know, an eSport in general through the college scene. There's lots and lots and lots of players coming out every day, you know, trying to make onto teams, trying to get into challengers, trying to get into these different leagues to make sure that they have some spots to play. And, you know, it's very, very competitive right now. It's something that's always great to see and always great to watch. Absolutely, 100%. And again, for those people that are new, we, we always like to do this in the pregame show. For those that might be here to just support their university, alumni, friends, family that are just here, maybe they're new to esports, what are they going to get as they see competitive Overwatch come to the NECC? You know, they're going to see a very, very hectic type of game here tonight you know it's very structured um but you won't necessarily know what's going on but me and jaren are here to kind of walk you know it is very very chaotic and we'll try to talk you through it the best we can absolutely and by talk through it we mean connor will tell us what is going on and i will say funny things on the side but it is close to time. We are going to have a good match. Our producer is going to let them know that we are ready to get this game started as both teams are in their lobbies. Again, before we do that, we want to say thank you to Helix Esports for all the things that they do for us behind the scenes to make esports possible. And, of course, a huge thank you, huge, huge thank you to our friends at HyperX. I know I got my HyperX ones on right now, and uh, the, some of the best gear in gaming now comes to the NECC. And now, Connor, as we go to the streets of Havana, that first stretch of road to that first point is so crucial. Break down for people what they're going to see on this map. You know, this is a very, very difficult first uh, choke point to get through. It's a pretty wide for a choke point, but there's a lot of things to be careful of. Long sight lines, so characters like Hanzo, Widow, uh, you know, any hit scan really, uh, really will do a lot of damage here. You know, if you don't have the proper amount of shields, you might have some trouble here. Or if you don't have a good dive composition, you know, those can be some difficult things to deal with. You can go through Cafe on the left here, but that's an even smaller choke point with only one exit, and you won't be able to push the payload out 
as you're moving through there. So that will also be an issue. You know, it really just depends on how these two teams want to attack and defend this first point. It will be a clash for sure. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we will let you know that Carroll University, Carroll University will be in the blue and Northern Essex will be in the red. And speaking of Carroll, looks like they're going to go with the double shield comp with that Arissa and Sig and allowing the Echo and the Ash, man. It's going to be interesting. What are you seeing on the red side as we jump into it right now? It looks like they're going for a double off tank composition. You know, it's very interesting, especially with these sight lines, you know, Freaky J is playing Widow, nothing too, too surprising here, but you know, there is no shields and they're just trying to use the payload as cover moving forward. They have a Mercy kind of flying around, heal, getting everybody heals up, trying to keep everybody alive. Widow with a huge pick onto the Ash, it is now 6v5. Rez comes off from Mercy, KTM goes back up into the fight and backs off with team. Orissa backs off and drops shield as well. Widow's duking it out. Echo almost goes down, but stays up. Down goes McCree, but McCree res. It looks like more shots into the poking phase here. It looks like Ana's going to go down, and so is Ash. Hammond doing his thing in the background. Tilted trying to get some disruption in there. Osiris good headshots with the McCree. Takes down Supercharger. Mercy gets the res off, but then gets picked by Roadhog. Ball still flying in, disrupting team. Widow now has the high ground on top right. It looks like they're going to back off here with Fabled going down. But Widow calls walls. Might be able to get a quick pick on that Ana in the background there. And that Ana is so crucial. So crucial with keeping her alive. Her nade, she does go down there. But her nade and that shot is so powerful and important for this team. Ana is a very, very uh, good healer to have. You know, you have a lot of ways uh, to basically disrupt your enemies, save yourself, stop ultimates. She is very, very powerful, but her downside is she is not very mobile. She's not quick. She doesn't have good movement abilities. She has to play with very, very smart positioning or could be taken out of this game very easily. Absolutely. And let's see. And so I'm looking at Ash right now, just trying to find room. Uh, hiding behind that Arista shield, trying to find room for KTM. You know, if you notice here on the right, Freaky J getting damage boosted by the Mercy here, trying to get some shots through that shield, but they just can't get anything through. Anti-nade from Ana prevents healing, but no one goes down. Osiris goes down from Echo, but gets rezzed by the Mercy, so it's still a 6v6. Sigma ults and and gets McCree stuck in the ultimate. McCree saved by the Mercy ultimate, but eventually goes down to the Sigma, which is nano boosted anyway. Ana and Hog have high ground, but both jump down to the background. Sleep comes out from Ana, but here comes Bob from Carol. Bob takes down Fabled. Tilted trying to get out along with Mercy. It looks like NECC is going to back off here. And they're going to regroup, going to wait for a, a good push this next time. Looks like they also have some ultimate advantage here. It looks like Fabled has his whole hog. Uh, Osiris has High Noon, and Haunted Mage has a nano boost. This could be a very, very dangerous combo. Hog and Ana play here if they get good positioning to take on this team. It could see, hey, we could see that nano, that nano whole hog, which is such a dangerous, dangerous combo. You know, but that's where Ana is still very powerful. You know, Lasker could just sleep the hog, and if he gets that sleep off, that nano and that whole hog are irrelevant. Tilted takes the nano, rolls into the supercharger, into the entirety of the back line if they're the enemy team. Nano does not really do much for them there. Widow comes out with walls, picks the Orisa, hog misses hook. They're still just fighting for that high ground positioning here. The two shields are helping them, helping Carol immensely here. Big sleep by Ana takes down Echo. Dynamite comes out, takes down McCree. Tilted goes down to Sigma as well. Mercy with a dangerous res there, gets it off. McCree's back in action, going after the Mercy and Ana. Flashbang misses. It looks like there's a ball now for Carol in the back line. Bob comes out as well. Oh, huge, huge. Uh, ultimates being used there, Tilted and Fabled going in, uh, using both their ultimates to really, really stack that fight in their favor. They end up taking that point uh, with just the four of them. 
Uh, they are doing a fantastic job of combining their ultimates and, uh, you know, really pushing into the back lines and good positioning on the enemy team, breaking them up so they can't fight together as a unit like they want to. Absolutely, and a lot of momentum here moving forward for Northern Essex Community College as they're already two points down with three minutes on the board. Creaky J getting those good picks on the low health heroes, making sure to hit those headshots. It's very, very, very dangerous to have a widow with free sight lines on you. Uh, it looks like Grim Reaper has fallen off the map here or jumped off one or the other. Uh, and looks like High Noon takes out Mercy as well, and down goes Ana, staggered in the back line. Unfortunate, they're gonna have to wait for healers to come back for this next time. They're pushing up very, very far with sitting Ana on payload, pushing everyone else forward. Freaky J in the in a bad position right now, trying to deal with them. Almost falls off, good grapple onto the underside of the bridge to get out and not get taken down by that Sigma. And so much going on right here on this point. As you look at that Hammond duel right in the middle, and it's going to be a si massive signal all trying to push them back, and that will push that Northern Essex team back just a little bit off of Halo. Ball gets rezzed by Mercy, but McCree takes down Echo. NECC sells advantage here. Flashbang and sleep onto Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper uses his shields to stay alive. Freaky J's got the high ground. Down goes Reaper before he can teleport onto Widow. Ball diving Widow now, but uh, McCree also taking down Ball, doing a good job supporting his long-range DPS there, doing what he needs to do to keep uh, keep the fight in their favor. Down goes Bioflex as well. Echo taken down by Freaky J as well. Now walls pop out from Widow. He's hitting a lot of shots here. This can be problematic. Ball drops in onto NECC alone, trying to stall payload a little bit. There comes Reaper as well. Ooh, Ball and goes that, down, yep. goes down. Freaky J is still getting picks. Mercy, battle mercying the Sigma a little bit. Her and Fable take it down. Whole hog on the bottom. Nano comes out onto the Lucio, not sure if that was intended or not, but Lucio goes down, High Noon picks him, Ball goes down as well, and it looks like Carol just can't get any bodies on payload, and it looks like NECC is going to take this first round. And Connor, not only did they take that first round, but absolutely had, I mean, with 105 left on that time clock in their time bank, I mean, they ran through that pretty fast. They did a very good job of keeping the pressure on and doing all the right things, waiting for alt advantage and, you know, making sure to combine their tactics in a way that puts them ahead of Carol in this game. Absolutely. And now we're going to now we're going to switch sides. Do you think? Well, you're not going to have to think about it because we are about to see what the compositions they will change as now Carroll University will have the payload side. And let's see what they come out with composition wise. Looks like they're going to bring out the Reinhardt and the ball. We've seen a lot of that Hammond play tonight, man. It's something we haven't seen a ton here on Overwatch Wednesdays. They also have a Sombra uh, pick and Moira. It looks like they're going to try to brawl it out with a majority of their characters here. And then Sombra ball are going to dive onto the faraway targets. Maybe uh, Widow, for example, with uh, Freaky J, although he is playing Ash this round, you know, using the Bob utilization and everything. Uh, but it looks like they're going to use that for dive and brawl with the rest of their comp. It looks like uh, Osiris and Freaky J are going with the Torb Ash combination here. Turret will be a nuisance for any of the flying characters if they ever make a swap so this will be also a nuisance for sombra when she tries to uh teleport behind or uh un become invisible uh near the high ground characters that could be problematic for sombra moving forward absolutely and we switch sides ladies and gentlemen as carol university with control of the payload as it moves down that main street of havana to that first corner Sombra has to take down the turret first, but the turret saves Ana's life. Ana gets to get off the high ground there. Torb now onto the high ground, taking on the Sombra. Sombra teleports out. Dynamite comes out, but so does Barrier, taking the fire off of Reinhardt, keeping him healthy and moving. Tilted gets taken down by High Charge Zarya. The hacks are coming out onto Fabled as well. Hacks are going to be a very big problem for the NECC here. So everyone's got his turret back up, but uh, Freaky J has been hacked on the high ground. 
trying to 1v1 that Sombra, not going well, drops off high ground, BBJ does get to the pick on the McCree there, here comes Coalescence from Moira, huge shields and huge damage here, but Bob is coming back out from BBJ, but is hacked, Sombra being a very, very smart pick here, Ooh. causing lots of problems, Molten Core uh, basically eliminating all the areas to stand around the payload. And Fabled is cleaning up there, even the Mercy, Battle Mercies, and takes out the Sombra here. Great, great hold by the NECC. Absolutely, and Northern Essex Community College, they are just playing out of their minds right now. And for that Reinhardt, for the opposing Reinhardt for Carroll, you'd like to see maybe his team group up with him just a little bit more. It seems like he is getting a little bit extended, and I don't necessarily think that's his fault, Connor. No, I don't think it is necessarily either. You know, NECC is doing a very good job of keeping them spread and kind of positioning in the way they want, except for that huge shatter there. They could not capitalize on it. Mercy goes way up in the air to get her ultimate out on the field, get lots of damage, lots of heals out very quickly. You know, concerned for that shatter, and rightfully so. Although I do believe that they could be, uh, Carol could be combining their ultimates with Sombra just a bit better. It looks like they have some ultimates coming up here. High Noon and EMP could be very devastating coming forward. You know, and there's a lot of a lot of talk that needs to be happening on the background in the lines. You know, trying to make sure that Sombra's targets are being attacked by the entirety of the Carol team. It looks like Whole Hog comes out and picks two. Uh, Sombra and Moira go down, and so does Grim Reaper. Rez comes out on Osiris, keeping you up, making sure to utilize that Rez efficiently, making sure you have as many people to fight on point as possible while the other team regroups. It is a very, very long walk from spawn for the NECC, so they're trying to keep as many people up as possible for each fight. And Carol makes a switch. They're going to go Hog Zarya. Going to try to go maybe meta here and try to get past this Farkas corner. Because right now, Northern Essex absolutely dominating as they hold around this first point. You know, I always am concerned when I see a double off tank, but you know, it just depends on, on the players and if they're good enough to run with it. And it looks like Bob is doing work and so is the McCree on both sides. Bob really cleaning this up. Moira coalescing uh, Hog, not going to be able to take him down, but gets a damage orb on him as well. It looks like Moira is going to go down to the Torbjorn. Torbjorn making sure they stay off point. And there goes Fable taking out Biowolf. It looks like NECC is going to hold here. 30 seconds left for first point. Absolutely. And Connor, I don't, again, I don't hate the, the Hog Zarya combo, but I think with that Reinhardt, we saw the massive shatter and just no one there with him. We, as an EMP comes out right now. EMP could be massive here. This could be game changing. Hog goes and takes out Hip Tilted. Molten Core comes out, trying to block off Cafe from pushing forward, takes down McCree with it. Hog pushing up on Torbjorn. Freaky J takes out Sombra. Hog is slept. Great on a play there. Hog out of breather. Now whole hogging on point, but is not enough. Nanoed Torbjorn takes him down along with Fabled. Hook onto the Zarya, and that is game one. NECC takes it. Man, and Connor, what a match. But before we get into talking about that game one of the first map, excuse me, let's take a look at Tilted as he has the Sigma play of the game. You know, great eats there, his ultimate's coming up, getting good blanket damage off. Takes down one ult. Doesn't get anyone with the ultimate, but is making sure to select his targets properly, making sure to get some good splash damage on everybody. Mm -hmm. Just being in the forefront of the battle, take doing what tanks do best, taking up that damage, and you know, really being a good team player there, not hanging back and being fairly aggressive, but not leaving his team. That's what you love to see out of your tanks. Absolutely. And, and so let's talk about that first map. Uh, look, I I'd like to kind of focus on Carol a little bit. I do feel like grim reaper had moments where he played very well we saw some big i mean he built that shatter up fairly fast but to me connor it looks like just the team not able to rotate with him and able to capitalize that even when he tries to pull the whole hog and uh, into the emp uh, there's just no one there to help him support so uh what do you think they could do uh is that something that you're seeing i know that that's what i'm looking at but what do you see that we could maybe see different from carol here 
you know, I definitely think that the communication is key here. You know, they need to have, you know, whoever their shot caller is, you know, calling targets, especially with that Sombra Perret play. When Sombra hacks a, a target on the enemy team, they lose their mobility. They lose their defensive uh, abilities. They basically are not able to defend themselves at 100%. So what their team needs to do if they're going to run a Sombra is they need to basically pounce on whoever is hacked because that is almost a free kill every time and if they can keep communicating and working together and making sure they're doing the right things at the right time and really being a cohesive unit you know you're going to see a lot more team fights go in their favor absolutely and so now we are going to as we get ready to change change and pivot a little bit we're headed to king's row king's row is absolutely one of my favorite maps in this game it is a beautiful aesthetically looking map but as we get ready to go down the streets uh, let's go take a look it looks at like downtown london and let's get our british flair on and what are you seeing as we get down here into king's row King's Row is a very, very open first point. There's a lot of high ground uh, areas. There's areas to go through buildings. There's a lot of different places teams can set up, defend from, and also a lot of flanking areas for you know the attackers to flank from. So there's a lot of interesting compositions that you can see on King's Row. Um, one of my personal favorites is a Symmetra Bastion combination with uh, with those big <laughs> teleporters onto a statue there. That's some good mobility and it's always something that's fun to watch and see. Um, rarely played though it is a very risky risky composition but it pays off when done correctly and it looks like both teams are going to come out with a ryan zaria setup and we see freaky j sw switch to that widow like we've seen multiple times from him with the genji paired up i mean uh, it's going to be interesting as it's going to be a fight inside this point it looks like they're planning on brawling. You know, out comes the Sombra again. You know, that could be problematic for Freaky J. That could be problematic for uh, Genji. Genji is, you know, in a bad way when he gets hacked as well. Same with Ana. If Ana can't defend herself, Lucio becomes very slow. You know, that Sombra could be pivotal here for Carol. You know, we just have to see if they can come together and really jump on those targets as a team. Well, let's get into it. Ana hacked in the back. Genji dives right onto the Sombra. It looks like Carol's getting pushed back here. NECC's taking point very assertively. It looks like they're gonna get the first tick. No, Grim Reaper hops right on point, does the right thing as the tank. Down goes both supports for the NECC. Absolutely massive. Down goes Bitter Vet, and down goes Freaky J. It looks like... Oh. Carol has the upper hand by a mile here. NECC is going to have to get pushed back into spawn, and they're going to have to reset for this next fight. And Connor, how about the play? I'm not saying Grim Ripper did that by himself. He had a lot of support from his teammates there. Like we spoke about in between matches, but a massive pin, a massive pushback, takes out the enemy Ryan, and let's see if they can hold him for the second time as NECC regroups. It looks like Grim Reaper's got a big shatter here. Let's see if he can outplay the Reinhardt. And there it is! There's the oh. shatter! Tilton goes down. Nanoed as well, combining oh. the Nano. Down goes Lucio. He's bubbled as well. Ana out of position, gets taken down. And back goes NECC to spawn. Fantastic Reinhardt play. Heads up play by the Ana there, using her Nano boost there. Almost gets picked by Widow, but it does not matter. Tilted goes down. And it looks like Carol has a very, very good comeback here. It looks like they're holding this point very efficiently. And it's like we talked about. We saw the plays from Grim Reaper. We knew that he was capable of it. Now see him get nano. See him there as they're going to cut through Hotel to try to come to the backside. A big grab comes out. Huge grabs. Reinhardt swinging into each other. Massive fire strike from Kermy. That was a huge grab Ooh. right there, and there was nothing they could do about it. Once they were grabbed, Reinhardt just needs to swing his hammer and cleave through the entire enemy team all at once. That's a lot of damage. And if you are not staying on top of it with heals and have the proper ways to deal with it, you are just going to get wiped. And that's what we saw right there. Absolutely, and you know that had to be communication as the coalescence comes out, but the Reinhardt gets slept. And Big uh, shatter. Ooh. Huge shatter, Reinhardt, Grim Reaper slept, but coming back a little out of position, gets taken down by Tilted. It looks like NECC is going to be on a roll here. They are taking that momentum and running with it. 
Tilted still pushing into spawn, firing at their spawn doors, walking past second point, really pushing forward, being as aggressive as possible. Same with Kermi. Kermi stepping up, you know, standing there as well. We have Lucio for the speed out if necessary. Two on payload. It looks like they're going to try to stall here. Freaky J on the high ground might be able to get a quick pick onto a squishy target. Grim Reaper's tossing the shield up and, you know, takes away his sight lines. Freaky J backing up here. Absolutely. Carol. Go ahead, Connor. Forwards. Carol pushing forwards onto this uh, point here, but Lasker is slept, almost picked by the Widow. Ash in the background taking shots now. Nano on to Kermi. Double Nano. Good block shatter. Walls come out by Widow as well. Good counter charge there. Two Nano uh, Reinhardts are on the field. Tilted and Kermi both go down here. Bob really cleans up, does a lot of good work. For Carol here, Freaky J goes down. KTM takes him out with a headshot. That was a fantastic defensive play by Carol. And right. And Car one of the things, Carol University comes into tonight's match, Connor, at two and three on the season, whereas Northern Essex Community College on the other side at five and zero oh at the number one seed in this Challengers Division. So this could be a massive upset for this Carroll team as we're gonna get right back into another brawl fight right now. Kermie pushing straight forward onto Grim Reaper, gets anteed half health, there's nothing he can do to heal. Here comes Grab, Ooh. Grab is gonna be massive here. Grim Reaper swinging into it and charging, gets slept, but not before him and Zarya can take out three. Looks like Freaky J is also in a bad situation here. Somber right on top of him. Freaky J takes the Somber down, but has to run out, getting chased down by Zarya Reinhardt. Freaky J grapples away like Spider-Man and gets out safely i tell you what connor i don't know about you but this is the kind of overwatch i like reinhardt versus reinhardt two titans in the middle of the payload here they go again shatter but hits no one but here comes blade as well down goes moira and he's in the background down goes both healers ash now dealing with the genji in the background i melee kills go down and beat comes out as well it looks like necc is going to use a lot of ultimates to win that fight and they even pop walls they might be doing that to see if there's any swaps and see how much time they have uh coming out of spawn doors maybe even try to get a cheeky pick on a support there moira standing still being shot at by freaky j here comes the damage orb Ana doing a good job keeping heals up They're gonna grim, reaper, yep. grim reaper just has his shatter that's all i wanted to make note and there it is as it comes out huge shatter but can their team capitalize no they cannot even a massive s oh Oh, it's absolutely massive. Here comes Nano, here comes Grav. What else do they have in their back pocket to throw down? Carol, um, very, very low for all their characters or coming back from spawn. Sombra taking lots of damage, goes down. Reinhardt waiting for the Ana, doing the smart play of holding inside spawn doors. Kermi taking a little peek, runs up on four of them. Is gonna have to pull back a little bit here. Here comes a shatter inside spawn doors. And there's the fire strike, Genji dashing in to get some kills, and they just could not touch payload. That is round one. NECC making themselves heard and known on that last push there, being very aggressive and very dominant, the kind of play that you like to see when watching Overwatch. Well, and uh, Connor, how about right there proves why they are 5-0 and in this division and why they are the number one seed in the playoffs. Every single team will be gunning for this Northern Essex Community College team because right now, I mean, I don't know about you, Connor, but this is impressive the way they're playing. They are doing all the right things. Even when they're losing team fights, they come back, they, they slow things down, they try to get their momentum back, they make the adjustments that they need to make to win those next team fights. They're using their ultimates together, they're doing all the right little things they need to do, you know, in order to win each and every team fight they come across. And it looks like Northern Essex will put, they'll take the Widow out. Freaky J going to switch to Sombra, maybe looking for something a little different as they try to hold here. Uh, but it looks like, it looks like, again, we're going to have two Titans face off and it's going to be a brawl fight right in the middle of the street. It looks like Osiris is taking his time, you know, making a pick. It'll, I'll be interested to see what that second DPS is going to look like. Out comes Reaper. Reaper, you know, a great 
great face tank DPS, you know, goes directly after the tanks. His self heal can be very, very helpful. You know, it's something that, you know, every tank hates to go against and hates to deal with. So he will be very good at brawling in these close corners fights around these corners. Freaky J looking for a quick hack, hiding in the back corner, uncloaking there, and down, uh, Zarya gets hacked. Osiris goes down with that hack from Immortal Winds. So 6v5 currently fighting around the side of tower you know soldier drops heals sorry is both fast fast shatter absolutely amazing shatter you know gets it very quickly and sends it 50 percent alt advantage on top of bio wolf you know he could not just keep up with the speed of that shatter hitting his fire strikes doing all the right things to you know hit that shower and get that team white it looks like he's gonna have to come back from spawn though can they hold off before carol pushes through them it looks like some of them are doing the smart thing backing off here waiting for their team hack in the back on the Ana, trying to get a full clip in lasker not doing so well Byro wolf is also taking lots of damage down goes three though it looks like Carol is doing a fantastic job of taking that point with the lack of any CC players in the area having to wait for spawn. You know, that stagger is very, very devastating to teams. You know, having to fight a 6v4, a 6v5, and then just slowly one at a time come into that, that uneven matchup, that uneven fight. You know, it can be very difficult to get your momentum back and very difficult to, you know, win those kinds of fights when you're down one to two players. But here comes an EMP early. Grim Reaper goes down. Hack onto Kermi. Kermi loses that battle, but down goes Bitter Vet. And here comes a Shatter. Hits no one. Unlucky. Bio Wolf gets bionated. Zarya hacked in the back line. It looks like NECC is going to regain control of this payload here and push Carol back into spawn. And they do push, but it is just, they have been trading. Connor, both these teams just trading back and forth, back and forth. They're doing a fantastic job of that, and now NECC is going to have to back up and regroup here real quick. It looks like Grav is ready from Tilted, and Kermi's almost got Shatter. Grav Shatter could be devastating here to Carol, but here comes a Nano Visor. Here comes Grav as well. There's that Grav. You know, they're responding with beat from both sides. Shatter going, coming down when ready, oh. when there's no shield in front of him. Survives the... Oh, there's the Shatter through payload. Gets one. Down goes Lucio and Ana. Carol no longer having any heals to deal with. You know, Reinhardt slept for uh, Carol here. And it looks like they're going to be cleaning up. Firewolf still on payload here. Gets staggered uh, slightly by the NECC. It looks like oh. Reinhardt's going to come back from spawn. Uh, very, very long walk for NECC here. And I thought that when Biowolf took Kermi out right there, it was going to maybe swing the momentum of that fight. But Kermi's team and the, the Northern Essex Community College team, they just grouped up, played together. I mean, it's impressive that they won that team fight. They all did the things oh. they didn't do, but massive, massive EMP. All of them are EMP. Not a single character has gone on EMP. And here comes Shatter. To, uh, Shatter slams two. EMP comes back, or uh, Hack comes back onto Reinhardt. Kermi goes down, and they are cleaning up. Now momentum now swings back. Wasted high noon. Unfortunate uh, decision there. Press Q during a losing team fight. That is unfortunate. That will definitely slow this fight down. You know, he'll have to try to get those... Uh, points back for his ultimate charge those percentages you know are sometimes very difficult to get back especially when dealing with a lot of shields and a lot of high mobility characters you know he'll have to work his way back for that torbjorn is the switch though uh you know great defensive character tilted is hacked and slept and here comes an emp shatter massive necc is coming back from this one and nano Nano might have been unnecessary there, but they're pushing forward. They want to guarantee themselves this team fight. They want to make sure their right heart stays up and, you know, pushes through everyone with no problems. NECC retakes payload control here. Torbjord sitting on payload, you know, maybe possibly putting a turret nearby. Team's about to clash at the payload once again. Carol coming around the corner, pushing forward. No bubbles for Zarya. Grav comes out from Tilted. Kermi swinging into the Grav here. Down goes three. 6v3, 4v2. And it looks like 
Carol's gonna have to back out yet again, although they did lose Kirby, uh, or Kirby and Haunted, but they're still going to have to back out. Losing fight for Carol there. They have three minutes on the clock to push this payload forward. They're gonna have to regroup and push, get some momentum here. Speaking Big grab on payload. Grab comes out along with an anti, great anti play. Turret takes out Zarya. Turret's doing some good shield damage. Sleep onto the Reinhardt, immediately woken up by Turret though. Hack comes out onto Kirby. Bubble goes out to try to save him a little bit. Here comes the anti nade. He's got no health, no heals. He goes down. Kirby goes down, but three of Carol go down. It is still an uneven fight here. They're just going to be poking around the corner trying to get their ultimate charge up. It looks like Carol has an ultimate advantage here. Sights comes out, tries to take out Turret, spends his time. Uh, turret kills uh, Ana here. Beat comes out trying to save them. They have two minutes left, but they've decided they're going to use some ultimate ultimates for this fight. Hack and oh. Shatter go down. Here comes Molten Core as well. NECC not taking any chances, using ultimates as as they see necessary to make sure every team fight is won and very decidedly so. Carol's backing out as fast as their Lucio will allow them to. And at this point, at this point with a one minute and 57 time back on the other side, your main goal, you have to win this team fight because you just have to make it all the way across. As the Nano comes out on the right. Nano on the ride, clashing Ryan's hearts in the middle on payload, you know, using that corner for a little bit of coverage as his team catches up to him. Here comes Grav out from Tilted, but massive, massive shatter, could not capitalize, but down goes three, four. It looks like Carol's taking this team fight. Hanzo's just sitting in spawn doors, going to have to wait. It looks like Carol's in a good position to get this here. It does not look like the NECC will be able to get a touch here. Dragons come out, but I'm not sure if it'll be enough. Kermy does his best to charge onto payload, but it's just not enough. Round two complete. 106 left on the clock after three. And, and one of the things that I want to talk about here, Connor, is I thought for Carroll University, that somber play from that last match, there were multiple op multiple times where a shat I, I mean, I saw one coming up towards that back side where there was a massive shatter by that Reinhardt where he knocked down almost uh, one DPS and one support. Through an, MV, through an EMP, pushed through to take them out. The Reinhardt tried to intervene, but the Sombra, after dropping the EMP, hacked the opposing Rhine and just took... I mean, it's impressive the way she's playing right now. The amount of crowd control that Sombra is putting out is what Sombra players are supposed to look like. This is how they're supposed to play. They make it so basically the other team is not allowed to play their characters, and then they stack it on top of each other with a, with a hack... Uh, to make sure that all the main players, the best characters that they could possibly use, you know, can't use their abilities for even longer. So, you know, Reinhardt not being able to put a shield up, fire strike, uh, charge, or anything like that, you know, keeping him hacked is probably one of the best things that Sombra could have done in that situation. Well, right now, Carroll University going to have control here, going to try to take this point. Uh, and, and they have one minute and six seconds to do it. Let's see what they can get done. As we take off into this round. Freaky J sitting in the top left here, trying to get a hack off quick. Looking for anyone. Gets hacked by Immortal. Loses that Sombra 1v1. Has to back off here. Clashing around the corner, front side of Hotel. Both Reinhardt shields incredibly low. Huge anti nades from both sides. It's a clash here, but it looks like Carol's actually going down here. High charge Zarya is doing work. That is a team kill. Soldier, Sombra, and Zarya being very, very coordinated, getting the hacks off, getting high charge, and getting those great micro missiles uh, in that quick burst uh, onto Carol. And Connor, we've seen both Reinhardts go down by both teams, and it just looks like Northern Essex uh, Community College, their DPS and supports able to win those team fights. For sure, you know, their DPS are doing everything in their power to keep those wins. But let's talk about Tilted keeping that high charge and finishing off all those high health heroes. You know, gets another three piece during that team fight. Freaky J goes down, but it will not be enough. There's a contest by Soldier. Kermy takes him out, and now it's, uh, Reinhardt's charging back in to get that last touch, but could not get there in time. Also had Shatter lined up for this fight. You know, that was a very, very tough first point to deal with for Carol. Let's see if they can hold it and tie this round out. But, 
But if you talk about Northern Essex Community College, Connor, right here, they're only one tick away from moving to 6-0 and on this NECC season. That is some impressive numbers, some impressive, impressive play. You know, they've earned every win they've gotten. It's not been something that they've just kind of accidentally stumbled into. This is something that they have earned and deserved so far based on their play. Absolutely. Guys, before we go anywhere, we want to remind you that you can follow us on social media at NECC Games. Again, that's NECC Games on Twitter and Instagram for live updates, announcements, and giveaways for everything related to Collegiate Esports. And now, Connor, here we go. It's going to be look like the same matchup. They do bring a Sigma out onto the field for Northern Essex. But I tell you what, it's going to be close, and it's going to be a brawl fight right in the middle of the street. Speaking of compositions, it looks like NECC's got that uh -oh. very risky but dangerous strategy. You know, with a Bastion and a Symmetra, it looks like that top of tower might be where they're going for, especially with that Sigma shield being able to block for them. This could be a very, very quick team fight. They just need the one uh, tick down, so they're going to look to make this uh, team fight very decided. There goes the teleporter. Down goes the Bastion, and he teleports on top. The high ground is now removed from Carol. Bastion can just sit there with his damage boost and heals and just unload on the enemy team. Reinhardt's shield for them goes down quickly. Down goes Kermy, but it doesn't matter. Heals down. Off tanks down. There goes the other heal, and it is just devastation fire from above bastion raining bullets onto carol there was nothing they could do to stop that play great great execution wow and let's go look and, and let's see this genji play of the game it's been a while since i've seen a big blade you know takes down the moira Make sure to get both heals and the Zarya and then finishes off the Ash here. What a great job by that Genji. You know, Golden Sword, he's clearly put a lot of hours in. You know, it's nothing that you haven't seen before, but also nothing that you don't see very often. Absolutely. And how about, Connor, listen, I know that you absolutely love that play teleporting the Bastion to the top. I mean, you, Connor, you, you called it as we came to King's Row. It's like you knew that it was coming. So you got to love it that they took a little something out of the Breeze playbook and ended up winning this match. You know, it's always a very, very fun, but very, very risky kind of play to uh, try and attempt. You know, especially on attack, you only get one shot for that. After you do it once, you can't reassert that control. You can't reassert, you know, that area. They'll be watching for it the next time, you know, they'll... De uh, they delete your teleporters from the game. They will make it very difficult for you to play that, and you'll have to switch comps and waste time. But it's Absolutely. fantastic to see. Yeah, absolutely. And again, impressive, impressive play by Northern Essex Community College. As again, they're going to move to 6-0 and on the Challenger season. But ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We still have one more map. And I'll tell you what, Connor, this next map, we're going to go to Lijong Tower. And I tell you what. This map still is important because for, especially this map is crucial for Carroll University because they're going to fall to two and four. They're going to be right on the bubble of making the playoffs in this challengers division. And once they're tied to the other teams, one of the things we look at is map wins. So I understand that you lost this match today, but if you can come out with at least one of these map wins to try to help you in your playoff push, I mean, I think that this is a crucial map right here for Carol. This is still very, very important, especially with that record, like you said. You know, this this could definitely mean touching playoffs or not being able to make it all. This this is a very, very important game here. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get into it. Um, I will look, as we're looking, um, I tell you what, it's a pretty fun time to be involved in the Overwatch team, Connor. I know you're having a blast. Uh, what are you seeing as far as this? both these divisions go here at the NECC and Overwatch? 
you know, both divisions are very, very competitive. You know, it doesn't matter what ranks any team is. You know, you could be looking at a, you know, platinum team or grandmaster team. Either way, they are putting together some terrific plays, some terrific, terrific, uh, you know, game plays, compositions. They, they, they truly care, and they're putting in the time and the effort, and it shows. No matter what division, you know, what league you're in, you know, these players are working hard, and it, it is paying off for them for sure. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we want to remind you that after this match, don't go anywhere because we are going to be about 30 to 45 minutes away from a monster of a match. Connor, one of the biggest programs in collegiate esports history, the number one ranked Boise State Broncos, number one team, the Boise State Broncos come in to the NECC live on stream to face St. Ambrose University. That is going to be a matchup. Two heavyweights for sure. I couldn't have said it better myself. It is going to be fantastic. We are letting everyone know that we are ready. We are about to get you this final map. Um, One second, ladies and gentlemen. Our producer is just com- communicating with the team, so we will get that that matchup to you very soon. We are headed that way right now. And Connor, as we go to as we go to Lijiang Tower, uh, let people know a little bit about what we're looking at as we have a new game mode in this third map. So we're looking at a control point here, which is basically king of the hill. So basically, once one team takes control of that point, that entire team has to be off that point before the other team can take control. And it is an absolute slugfest every time these two teams meet on this point. It is just fighting tooth and nail trying to get control. Connor, are you expecting another couple uh, brawl compositions here as we get ready for this one? It would be crazy to do anything but a brawl composition here. You know, it's a little bit of dive is is a good way to go because there's just enough room to go about it, but you still need to be able to fight in close quarters. And it looks like the NECC is going to take that dive uh, strategy here with Hammond Diva, two off tanks again, trying to get those uh, get, get the other team split up and using uh, Freaky J as Tracer and Osiris as Genji to kind of finish off those uh, low health targets in the background. And you know, Lucio and Moira, great, great brawl and dive supports, you know, very, very good for fighting, very good for staying in it and being mobile. You know, this is a great composition we're looking at here from the NECC. And for the other side, May, I love it. The little little young lady with the glasses and the blizzard. Connor, I would think that if with Connor Breeze, she'd be one of your favorites. May is always fun to play against, but like, can we talk about Tilted getting those two boot kills, Ooh, three kills, oh. swinging people off the point here? Tilted taking that fight and saying, you know what, you're gonna reset now. This is my point. You can come in through a different door next time. My goodness, what a play right there. And I tell you what, this, uh, I love this action. The, this brawl dive meta is just so much fun, and I like watching it. And I'm happy to be doing it with you here tonight, Connor. Oh, for sure. You know, I'm, you know what? I'm having a lot of fun watching Tilted play. Uh, Hammond, he goes down there, but he's always, always enjoyable to watch. He's doing some crazy plays, being aggressive as, uh, as always. Bomb comes out, takes down Brig. Freaky J, good bomb there, trying to get some more picks off. Uh, May ice blocks Genji to flex, but doesn't get anyone. Lucio takes uh, Diva out of mech. May trying to get some freezes in on Lucio. Tilted back in this fight here. It looks like they're still contesting. Lucio goes down, but so does Grim Reaper. Fable takes him out. Fable gets d by Reaper. Beat comes out for Carol. Carol's doing their best to retake point. Moira Coalescent comes out, but so does Reaper. All Ooh. Reaper takes out two. Bio, Flat, Bio Wolf takes out Fabled. Alts come out from Tilted here, still contesting. They're still getting percentage and charge off of this, even though they are so close to having the point taken from them. Lucio doing a good job of touching. Same with Tilted. Tilted goes down. It looks like wow. back out as well. What a fight. Oh, Connor, that was a, as the good old boys down here in the south would say, a slobber knocker of a fight on the point. Is that took, I mean, that took almost 67% almost to get there. Wow. What, that is an absolute slugfest if I've ever seen one. This is what I'm talking about. You know, these control points are very crazy. 
Blade gets uh, grabbed, cannot do anything with it, and down goes Haunted as well. Moira goes down. They're at a serious disadvantage here, but Bomb comes in, picks no one. It looks like Carol is dominantly keeping this point. They are fighting for that last map win to stay in playoff contention here. They, they want it bad. Absolutely, and let's just see. I mean, because that, that huge point, but now it comes down to if you can win it, you can lose it. Let's see if, if NECC can come back and try to take this point. It looks like NECC is fairly split right now, but coming in from front doors instead of side. Tilted almost goes off map, saves himself with a quick jump. Both area denials coming out from both Hammonds. Recall by Tracer onto health pack. It looks like both supports for Carol go down. This is not looking good for Carol. Fabled is demecked, but down goes May and Zarya. It looks like NECC is going to assertively retake that point. Reaper's going to attempt to get out without getting staggered. Freaky J takes him down. And Connor, what when when you lose this point right here, you're down 68 to 75 percent. When you're regrouping, what are you trying to do as your team here? I'm trying to make sure you're talking about what ultimates are being used. Trying to keep track of the other team's ultimates and make sure that you're not overly rushing. You know, 75 percent is a long, long time to get that point back. You know, you don't want to rush it, and make mistakes. Bomb comes out. Biowolf takes out the main healer. Moira, Moira goes down for the NECC. Tracer recalls there. They have brought into overtime 99%. Reaper ultimate comes out as well, keeping everyone off the point. Genji going after the brig there in the background. Tilted comes back, drops his area denial onto point, but it's not enough. He goes down, but both healers go down for Carol as well. It looks like the uh, NECC is making a push again, but loses Osiris and Lucio. They're going to have to back out here in hopes to have one more full push together. Tracer being uh, annoying to the backline of the other team, building up that ultimate so she can drop a bomb on one of the supports. Tilted comes back in, drops on May. Here comes Blade from Genji, but gets grabbed oh. again. Area denial as well onto that grab. Takes out Genji and Lucio. Fabled is demecked and dethroned, taking him out of this game. Freaky J gets bomb off on Lucio, but will it be enough? Haunted Mage goes down, no more healers. For uh, NECC, Tilted goes down as well. Harold fighting for this last point here. Tracer's all that remains on point, but Lucio's coming up fast along with Genji. They are staggering in, trying to get those touches. Lucio flying around the top. Here comes Bomb as well. Bomb takes no one. Osiris goes down. Diva demecked. Lucio still on the walls, but getting frozen by May. Not looking good for him. Stays alive. Fabled gets pushed off map by Bittervet. Both beats come out here, coalescence as well from NECC. Here comes the Death Blossom on the middle of the point, but gets no one. Lasker goes down from Tilted. Oh my Absolute goodness. Roll. There's grab a grab. The NECC again. Zarya doing a very good job of hitting those grabs when it matters. Freaky J goes down. Fable takes out May. Last on point. Baby Diva, last on point to touch. Can anyone else wow. get a touch? No, they cannot. Woo wee! Holy moly, that guacamole and some chips on the side. That was a fight right there, Connor. That is exciting Overwatch. Can you tell that they want this last map? Oh, I mean, look, we talked about it. This map's so crucial because if they're going to want to be in the playoffs, those map wins on the bottom of this playoff seating is going to be so important. And you can tell that Carol is fighting for every single inch that they have. My goodness, Connor. Do you think they can pull it off here and win this next one? You know, if they keep their momentum, they keep making the smart plays, they keep being positionally sound, you know, they have a very, very good chance of taking this map. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. The Whoever wins this map is going to win this final – or sorry, whoever wins this round is going to win this map. Let's find out if they can push it to another round or can Carroll University pull the upset and take this map. You know, Carroll University, Zarya has been doing a very great job of getting her grabs very fast. Goes down there to Reaper. Our Fable goes down to Reaper and Freaky J goes down as well. Reaper doing a great job of picking DPSs. Uh, you know, pushing uh, NECC back. It looks like NECC is going to have to back off here. Carol doing a great Ooh. job keeping that momentum and pushing forward into the other team. 
And Connor, I don't think you could have asked for a better way for this last map to get started. You win the first, you come out, get the early picks, and take the map and have control right away. Now this is exactly what they want to happen. They have their May and Brig still. They have a high charge Zarya. 50% of the way to a Graviton Surge, you know, something that is some, that is very difficult to deal with and a lot of ultimates combine well with. It looks like NECC is going to take on the point, but they're going to have Hammond in their back line being frustrated, take, making Reinhardt turn his shield around. Coalescence comes out, but so does Beat. Both teams use a support ultimate. It looks like Grim Reaper stays up, but Tilted goes down. Fabled goes down as well, and down goes Osiris. Pharmacy up in the air, though. Can they get any picks? Bio Wolf takes out free pj and it is not looking good for the necc here they're gonna have to regroup and think of a new strategy moving forward to really deal with this uh this composition they're working against absolutely and again <laughs> all the momentum swung this carol away you, you like to think where was this in the first two maps connor you know, it, it, momentum is a tough thing to deal with. It just wasn't going their way for the first couple of maps. But now that they have it, they aren't giving it up. They are going as hard as they can. But here comes a barrage from Farah. Picks both supports, May and Zarya. It is not looking good. Z Death, <laughs> Death Blossom comes out, takes Freaky J, but no one else is going to have to recharge that ultimate. Now, it looks like Bio Wolf uh, tried to get as much percent on that point as possible. Uh, they still have Grav. It looks like uh, Freeze is coming up very soon, too. They're looking pretty even on the alt economy here. Let's see if they can retake here with their Grav and Freeze combination. Bio Wolf slamming in the background. Both Grabs come out here. Shatter comes out as well, but down goes May, down goes Lucio. Here comes the Brig ult. You know, support ultimate, but you know, they're not quite together. High charge, Zarya is coming in. Grim Reaper is pushing forward, and Biowolf is swinging on point. Round and round he goes. Moira Coalescence is, but so does Mercy. Area Denial comes out too. NECC looking like they're going to hold here. And a massive hold at that, Connor. That grab, so big, able to catch ball and, I mean, able to catch both tanks from Carroll and able to take them both out and swing momentum back the other way. It is unfortunate as well that May went down so early in that fight. You know, May could have been a real game changer with her ultimate there, but you know, they're gonna move forward and they still have it moving into this next fight. They have beat, they have a freeze, but it looks like uh, NECC is not giving them a chance to even leave spawn here. Here comes Barrage into quite literally spawn doors here. <laughs> Tilted charging into the, the literal spawn of Carol here, rezzing in front of spawn doors as well. Being very, very aggressive here. They don't even want Carol to get out of the room. They are doing everything they can to bring this to a third map. Absolutely. <laughs> Hashtag to the spawn we go! Hammond in the background, getting, uh, doing the smart play, getting the NECC to back up away from spawn doors. They have a Lucio as well that can get a nice touch here. Hammond swinging through again. Almost C9s, but doesn't quite because of uh, Moira for NECC. Big pin there, but stays alive. Hammer goes down, gets the Hammond, but Hammond shields and survives. Another Death Blossom, but gets no one. Osiris takes him down. Lasker goes down and so does Bittervet as well. Bio goes down as well. Grav comes out and coalescence. Nothing that Carol could have done there. They're going to bring it to a third round here. And Connor, you said it. You said it in the pregame uh, or in the middle of this game that fabled for uh, NECC both sides that Zarya play has been so crucial today. And how about multiple Gravs? where multiple tanks got taken out, and then how about the the Death Blossom getting popped there on that last point, and then again, that Graviton Surge coming out and helping take Ball out win that last point. The Zarya play has been impressive today, to say the least. Zarya play has been absolutely phenomenal from both sides here. You know, I think in that last uh, those last couple fights, I think I would have liked to see Reaper uh, combine his ultimate with something, either a Freeze or a Grav or a Shatter, just anything that can really disable uh, NECC from moving. I would have liked to see some more uh, cohesion with the Reaper Ultimate, but you know, we live and learn and we just move on to the next fight. Speaking of which, he's doing absolute work to tilt it and puts him away, sends him back to the spawn room. 
Freaky J getting some good damage in on Brig right there in the background. Cyrus goes down, but so does Reaper. Trading back and forth for each team here. Zarya very high charged in Fable. And NECC pushing straight to point. Carol doing the best they can to kind of contest that point, but it was not enough. Bitter Vet and Immortal go down here, but here comes Ball. Bio goes down as well. They're going to have to back up and wait. Uh, no shields, no tanks, uh, no shield tanks uh, for Carol in this uh, composition they got working with here. It looks like Ball is coming back. They're looking for Zarya Ball here. Tilted being the Reinhardt is giving them a big shield advantage, being able to take over more ground uh, safer and not get picked as easily from uh, Carol. Ball in the background just disrupting. I'd love to see them, Connor. I'd love to see Carol come in and win one of these teams' fight. They've proven that they can do it. I'd love to see it happen. You know, and they're doing all the right things. Ball right there, trying to get on point, get uh, NECC to turn around there. You know, that's some smart plays, just enough to kind of take the tension away from the door they got to deal with. But here comes a massive shatter and grab uh, back from Carol, but it doesn't matter. The fire strike picks out both tanks, and his shield just lets him walk backwards. Mercy also ulted, keeping that Zarya alive. Fabled, you know, doing everything they can to walk up to spawn doors, give it a kiss, and back off. Freaky J getting some good rocket damage in onto the Hammond. Osiris and Fabled both take down supports here, and here comes a grab from Fabled. Grim Reaper tries to stand in the doorway and face the Reinhardt head on, but could not do it without the support he needed. Back and, it's and it's almost like NECC said. You know what? You got your one round win, but that's enough for today. We got things to do. And they have just been absolutely clutch here in this final round. You know, it makes me think that they, they took the, the amount of time, the amount of thought uh, in between rounds to really change up their strategy and do what they need to do moving forward to, you know, make some right decisions. Uh, you know, it's, it's great, great to see teams, you know, making adjustments like that in the middle of the match. Absolutely. We talk about how crucial communication is, and you can tell that this NECC team is staying together, talking, and here comes the fire ult. Earl and High Noon pop out, get no kills, but down goes Junkrat and Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper, Marty Dom takes down Osiris, but gets rezzed. Lasker goes down as well. Solo Shatter on the Hammond, takes him off the map. Oh, takes himself off the map. Hammond back to touch for overtime. Unlucky charge there. Tilted goes down himself, but it does not matter. Good attempt there. NECC takes it. Wow. Connor, <laughs> we'll get into how impressive this was, but let's see this this play of the game here. It's going to be your boy Tilted with that Hammond play. You know, I love the Halloween skin. Very festive. Oh, here's that boop I was talking about. Gets the two-piece there. He swings around, and he gets a third uh, with a charge, I believe. There it is. There's a slam. Absolutely great Hammond play coming out of him. Absolutely. And what a play. Not only a play by him, but how about this Northern Essex University team? They come in here. Now they move to, uh, wow. I mean, they come in here and, I mean, this community college is the number one seed in this division. 6-0 and oh on the year. And it... They, Connor, they, like you said earlier, that they proved and they earned every fight they have. They've proven why they're the number one seed in the playoffs right now. They are clearly putting the time in. They're they're looking at their compositions. They're knowing what they can play. They're knowing what they need to improve on. You know, they're making adjustments mid-match. They're clearly communicating. You know, they're going through all the right channels, all the right processes to, you know, really think about what they're doing and why it works and then improving upon it even further. And that's what you love to see in Overwatch as a team or in any sport, really, you know, making those small time adjustments for big time plays is what you love to see. And again, Connor, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to hear you say it and me tell you that you're right, because communication has been the difference in every single game that we have seen here at the NECC. It's impressive. It truly is.
Absolutely. Hey, and again, guys, thank you for being here with us tonight. Don't forget, you can follow us online on social media at NECC Games. Again, that's NECC Games on Twitter and Instagram for live updates, announcements, and giveaways through our social media on Twitter and Instagram. You can come check us out. And of course, thank you to everyone watching us on Twitch. We will be back live very shortly for all those watching us on Twitch Live in about let's call it 35 to 45 minutes, you are going to see the number one ranked Boise State Broncos come in and face St. Ambrose University. It is going to be, as my man Connor Breeze would say, a slugfest in the Champions Division. And I tell you what, Connor, thank you for being with me here tonight. Thanks for having me. As always, Wednesday night is the best night of the week. That's it, my man. It's always good when Connor can be here with me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to our partners one last time. Thank you to our friends at Helix Esports for all they do behind the scenes. Of course, our friends at HyperX, some of the best gear in gaming, now comes to the NECC. And, of course, the announcement came out last night that the NECC playoffs – will be featured live on ESTV. Again, ESTV, our linear TV partner. You can download it on Samsung TV+, Plus, the Roku channel, Vizio. Plenty of options for you to download their platform and catch esports action from around the globe on their page. And you can see the NECC playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, for our commissioner, Jacob Van Ryan, for our director of esports and executive producer this evening, Caleb Gluby. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. My name is Jaron Bell. For Connor Breeze and everyone here at the NECC, we will see you next time. Stay beautiful. Stay blessed. GG's. And this is the NECC. We'll see you very shortly.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NECC. I am your host, Jaron Bell, and of course, with me tonight, the one and only Yelk Reb himself is in the building. What is up, buddy? What's going on, Jaron? I am stoked to watch this game here. Oh, I'm telling you what, not only am I excited to watch this game, but in this game, you talk about, I mean, Yelk, one of the number, one of the top ranked programs in the country, the Boise State Broncos, the number one seed in the NECC playoffs, come in to face St. Ambrose University. This is how you want to end your Overwatch Wednesday. Yeah, it definitely is. St. Ambrose, uh, they've got their work cut out for them today. They know that. It's no secret going against the top seed in the NECC. Boise State, they've got a pretty terrifying squad put together in this Champions Division. I mean, they have run over a lot of competition in scrims. They're doing well, too. They hardly ever drop maps. So, SAU, they got their work cut out for them. But again, they're a team that's beaten Champions Division teams, and I think they can do it again today, but it's going to take all they've got. But like David and Goliath and other underdog stories from across time there's always a chance when you put five on five and you send them into overwatch yelk there's always a chance for a major upset yeah there definitely is i mean some days your comp just clicks and some days the other team maybe doesn't have all the pieces together so you know boise state they've got to remember that even though they're the top team they can't get too confident you can't get complacent and they've got to compete throughout this whole game if they give saint ambrose any room i'm sure they're going to take it and run and they could turn this one on its head really quickly. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to remind you uh, that you can follow us online at social on our social media at NECC Games. Again, that's NECC Games on Twitter and Instagram for live updates, giveaways, and all kinds of information that you can check out. And got some maybe interviews, some highlight videos. There's a lot of cool stuff. And I tell you what, Yelk. It's a cool time to be involved in collegiate esports right now. Yeah, it is. With every single game I watch, I realize that college esports is becoming something that's truly varsity. Like you're really seeing these schools with the most talented programs emerge and just kind of solidify themselves as pioneers in this thing that we got going on that is college esports. So it's definitely an exciting time, Jaron. Absolutely. And with that, as we grow, we cannot do it on our own. And we are grateful for our partners tonight. I want to say thank you to our friends at Helix Esports for all they do behind the scenes to help us put this product on your screen. And then, of course, HyperX, some of the best gear in gaming now comes to the NECC. HyperX will also be giving the winners, the team members of our championship Overwatch team will be giving them their choice of picking out a couple items within the HyperX family. So big thank you to them and supporting Collegiate Esports. And of course, Yelk, they made the announcement last night. I made the announcement online that now the NECC Official playoffs will be live on ESTV. ESTV now available on Samsung TV Plus, the Roku channel, Vizio. Plenty of options for you to download their platform and check out esports action from around the globe 24 7 on their platform. And that includes the NECC playoffs. And Yelk, we are one week away. We have one more week next week of in season action as all roads lead to that NECC national champion and the playoffs and in this champions division all roads lead through Boise Idaho yeah they seriously do Boise is definitely that team that's looking to add a little something into their trophy cabinet after you know the playoffs wrap up but you know it's a long road between now and then it's weeks of overwatch to play so they've got to test their metal every single game and not give up an inch this season. Absolutely. Well, we are going to let the teams know that we are ready to get going. Um, and so we're going to be very close to some action right now. If you were here early, you, you saw in the challengers division, you saw a fantastic matchup as Northern Essex university, the number one seed in the challengers division won that division. We do have the wrong map set up here. So we're going to get that changed. It's no problem. 
<laughs> oops, oops in the chat. Oops and L's in the chat. We love our producer. We will get that straightened up. But again, like I was saying, in the Challengers Division, y'all, we saw Northern Essex Community College come in to face Carroll University. Northern Essex, the number one seed in those Challenger playoffs ch playoff bracket, and they won 3-0 in that match. So we could be looking as Boise State tries to win a 3-0 as the one seed here, and we can have both one seeds go 3-0 and on the night. Yeah, on paper, it's definitely what you expect, and props to Northern Essex because, you know, when you're number one, and Boise State knows this too, you got a target on your back. So not only do you realize that you represent the best play in the tier at that time, but you've got to come through and make sure that you really aren't letting any secrets get away and not letting your strategies get stolen, too. So, Northern Essex, Essex coming through getting a 3 0 sweep. That's what you like to see. Boise State looking to do the same thing. Exactly. Absolutely. And as we pull a cigar out and lay back and relax under a palm tree and have a good time, let's go to the streets of Havana because we are about to get some action. And, Yelk, break us down a little bit what people are going to be seeing here on this first map and first round of the night. Yeah, so Havana is a great little map here because it's not like maps we've had in previous map pool weeks where it just has these towering high grounds throughout the entire thing. It's a relatively flat map with 90 degree corners, so it's great for those brawl comps to play. But Boise State's one of those teams where they're so organized and so high octane, I wouldn't be surprised to see a dive comp come out if it gets to it. Second point comes around, high grounds are a little more in play and there's a lot of mid flanks you can access too. But you know, this is just a payload map, so the attackers have to sit on this red little truck and move it through three points of this map. It takes a fair amount of time, maybe about six minutes on a good run, ten minutes on a rather slow run. And it's the defender's job to get this car to just you know, stay in park and keep from moving. But it looks like Boise State, uh, they're looking at Sigma Roadhog. Am I reading that correctly? That is pretty out mm -hmm. there, Jaren. It looks like Sigma Roadhog and the widow but it's going to be countered by that dive comp as we're going to see winston diva right out of the gate ladies and gentlemen we will remind you that saint ambrose university will be in the red boise state in the blue welcome to the champions division we have overwatch on overwatch wednesday yeah getting going here the main tank cloud on this winston just jumping right into the front line kellen guacker just solidifying this doorway with plato just dealing a ton of damage through here spanning down Alyssa and finding the moira and now it's just an absolute steamroll as the diva gets completely erased by cal who is just backing himself into this corner keeping himself up with his resources and staying far away from the fight playing very safe agent double m7 Getting in the mix on Sombra, just trying to farm up that EMP already halfway. That's going to be the most crucial ultimate on the side of St. Ambrose. And again, for for that Widow, you talked about in the pregame how there's not a lot of high ground. But as the team was trying to retreat, they're not even able to retreat to regroup as the pocketed Mercy Widow just takes them out down the mid lane. Oh, so dangerous with that Widow with the Mercy damage boost. Yeah, and that's what this Sigma Roadhog comp is all about. It's all about two snipers, massive pick potential. If you find a headshot, you find a kill. If Roadhog gets a hook, he gets that kill. Sigma can confirm with his rock stun ability. So just massive pick potential. We're seeing it right now as Goblin and Plato are popping off on the kill feed, finding three quick kills. And right now, St. Ambrose is on the full retreat. And again, I mean, <laughs> Yelk, at this point, Boise State is as advertised. Yeah, they definitely are, but I mean, St. Ambrose is just kind of playing the long game. Overwatch is a game of ultimates, and they're starting to come up on a few, most notably that EMP. They're going to get a tank composition switch off of the dive comp cloud over to the Orisa and gets melted in the spawn door by Play-Doh, damage boosted by the Mercy. That is a great heads-up play by Boise State, not giving St. Ambrose an inch of this map so far. Absolutely. And again, pure domination at every turn. And that Widow has been so crucial, but that tank play from the Hog has just been dominant. Yeah, Guac's job is just to act like a final boss. He just has to be an absolute force on all parts of the map. Right now, we've got the Gravitic Flux coming in from the Sigma as three kills come through in the feed. The main tank and the Lucio, the last alive going down on the side of St. Ambrose. Cloud barely making it out on his way back to spawn safely. And Yelk, as you see this, what is Boise State doing that is really being so dominant? 
It really is just multiple angles of pressure from these snipers, Goblin and Plato, with that massive pick potential that I've talked about. And then Glock, again, the final boss, is a sheer force. He's the biggest threat on the field, even with two snipers out there. Roadhog's hook is the most punishing ability in the entire game. And I think just what we're seeing Boise State do, setting up and fanning out around these off angles, makes it a very hard task just for St. Ambrose to get out of this spawn. And St. Ambrose has to open up a lot of angles and probably use a few ultimates to get through this part of the map. It's not going to be easy. Oh, and it's just tough. But let's see if they can regroup. Still a little bit of time left. Let's see if they can come out. But, I mean, at this point, uh, the damage has almost been done. Yeah, it's been a massive hold so far. Plato's got to let this Dragon Strike fly right in the spawn door, unable to find the Coalescencing Moira. The beat drop keeping her up in the nick of time. Both support ultimates being used. Also, the EMP over the top gets countered by the Transcendence from a large big of the Boise State Zenyatta. And Kel finds a crucial kill on Agent Double M7 and Litlin. The Lucio also falling. And Alyssa going down for St. Ambrose as well. Cloud and the Moira, the last to go. It's a very strong hold here from Boise State. 12 seconds on the clock. No ultimates left in play for the Broncos and a few in the works here for St. Ambrose, but it looks like it's a massive amount of pressure right in the spawn doors. They've got the snipers just touching the doors of the spawn. You really never see this comp played out like this. The supercharger gets used from the side of St. Ambrose, but with two members down, it's almost an impossible task. Alyssa and Agent Double M7 fall, and it looks like the payload's gonna be staying right here, Jaren, as overtime bleeds down. That is a fantastic defense from the Broncos. Oh, and just at the end, just to add insult to injury, he shoots the dragon through the spawn door with Hanzo. An unbelievable amount of control. And right now, if you're St. Ambrose, uh, it's time to circle the wagons because Boise State and the Broncos are here to play. Yeah, they definitely are. Jaren, I really was surprised to see that Sigma Roadhog double sniper comp pulled out by Boise State. I know they're a talented team, but just the intricacies of that comp and the high level of skill it takes to play that, especially at this level, is uh, really something that I think Boise State is in a league of their own because I don't think any other team in the conference could maybe pull off a comp like that. It really takes individual talent from four different players, both your tanks and both your damage dealers, to just you know, click heads, like you have to put the mouse, the crosshair on such a small little thing if you're playing a sniper and you just have to be such a threat and such a big presence on Roadhog like Walk is doing and they're doing it perfectly. I mean, cool down cycling, getting those picks with the snipers, finding those headshots. It's just a very impressive display so far from the Broncos. Absolutely. And you have to give credit to Doc Haskell, one of the top coaches in esports in the country, in collegiate esports. He has put together a monster squad as the SRs of this team is high, as you could talk about. But I mean, again, the talent that he has brought into this organization is unbelievable and big kudos to that Boise State esports program. Yeah, I mean, their coach clearly runs a good ship over there. The Boise State 2 team, there are no slouches either. I've gotten a chance to cast a game of theirs, and they're on a very clean dive comp. That was what I was expecting this Boise State team to pull out as well, but I'm pleasantly surprised to see the Sigma Roadhog 2 snipers because it's one of the most entertaining comps to watch as you see Litlin get that headshot kill or yeah. fall, sorry, by the way, the headshot to Plato, who has just been a monster on this Hondo. He's going into the back line with Guac already. You can see this massive off angle set up by Plato and Glock as they're shooting into the sides of St. Ambrose. And down goes one, down goes two as Cloud falls in with the pillar that is Cloud on the Reinhardt removed. It looks like Boise State is going to make quick work of this attack as this payload is already near the finish line. And again, it's, you hate to say it, but it looked like just too much too much from Boise State as they came out in dominant fashion. But before we get into talking about it, let's look at this play of the game. Play of the game. Yeah, no surprise. It's Kel. I'm thinking it's just going to be a big gravitic flux dealing massive amounts of damage to the entire team of San oh. Ambrose. Lifting three up into the sky right there and slamming them down, getting those confirms as he finds Cloud last. That's that's an impressive play, and that's what I'm talking about. Sigma's not the hero who's you know hitting those headshots. He's Got a projectile that's incredibly hard to hit. He keeps the shield up, keeps your teammates alive, and Kel did a great job that entire round. 
Wow. And one of the things that I think is so impressive, and you touched on it a little bit, obviously the dual snipers and the talent that is needed, but also we just saw that from Kel right there. How about these players that might have much higher ranks? Sometimes you get higher ranked players. They sometimes don't mesh well, but it looks to me like this Boise State team, all these players playing at such a high ranked level, but they come together and the communication is just there, Yelk. Yeah, the Boise State Broncos are looking real scary, Jaron. Uh, like you were saying, all these players that mesh well together, you can get to the high ranks of Overwatch in one of two ways. You can be either mechanically gifted and just be an absolute master of the mouse and not miss any shots, or Overwatch is a game where you can be a completely supportive player and you're bailing out your teammates left and right and you're making all the guys around you stronger and better players. And I think that's what we've got in Boise State. They've just got a very well put together team. And it's dangerous when you can get both of those things. <laughs> and But right now, we're going to change focus. I have seen teams, upset teams on this map. King's Row is so unforgiving at times. And as we get ready to switch over there, I mean, what are we going to see differently here? Yeah, this is, this is a brawl-heavy map. It's a lot like Havana where there's not many high grounds. The first point of King's Row has some high grounds that wrap around the back of the point. Uh, but this is going to be a hybrid map. I'll explain it once we get in how that game would works for anyone who's not familiar. But yeah, it's going to be one of those low ground maps. Those tanks with movement abilities, not going to be as much of a factor. Those brawl tanks like Sigma Roadhog is going to work fantastic on this map. Reinhardt Zarya, another brawl comp tank lineup that, you know, could see some action for the side of St. Ambrose. That's kind of what I'm expecting. But, yeah. you know, I think if you're Boise State, you're going to be running that Sigma Roadhog double sniper because this is another fantastic map for it. Uh, we want to give a big shout out to some of the people um, in the chat. Uh, Hurricane o uh, Overwatch, obviously here for their boy Yelkreb. Big shout out to them uh, and the other people in the chat. Big shout out for the St. Ambrose fans in the chat. Uh, it is a tough night, and and we're looking for your team to bounce back. We appreciate you coming in here and and taking a, and tuning in to Overwatch Wednesdays. Is Man, let's get ready for this next match. And like you said, let's explain that game mode, Yo, because as we change it up just a little bit. Yeah, so King's Row, if we're just able to look at this first point, you can see there's a little white square that is going to be our first objective. Once the objective gets captured, it's much like Havana, where it's that payload map. You have to move a payload through two points on this map after you capture the first objective. Uh, if the attacking team does get the first objective, you're going to see these garage doors open, and that's where the payload is going to come out from. And then you've got the rest of the map to finish from there on out. But this objective-based game mode, you've got the defenders with a pretty big advantage because they get to set up any way they want. And it looks like we're going to see Boise State pulling out Plato on Reinhardt. So they're switching up their main tank. Kel is going over to the Reaper. And then Glock is staying on the big boss Roadhog. So this is a very interesting brawl comp. Kind of a cocky one coming out from Boise State because Glock really is not going to be able to support Plato that well unless he is just hopping off in the kill feed, getting a lot of kill potential on Roadhog. And we have seen that potential, like you said, in the past. So let's not expect anything different from Guac. Oh, man. Oh. Well, there's one. Cloud goes down, and Guac is already threatening to push toward the spawn door, but a quick Maywall is going to have him on the back foot, sent back through the choke, and bailed out by Plato, who clearly shows that he's got the sticks on Reinhardt, knows what he's doing on this hero, not just a DPS player. That's good to see. Now Cloud is back in the mix, out of spawn with the Discord on his head, already threatened by a massive amount of damage, but it's going to be Plato going down first and a rip tire to bail out. Boise State finds a double kill. Coalescence over the top from Jerky, trying to bounce this one back for St. Ambrose, but he is sent back to spawn as he's erased by Goblin. Well, and one of the things here, Yoke, that I'm seeing is even when Guac gets walled off, is able to exit, and even when the Coalescence comes out and we lose a couple people as the Ryan goes down, I mean, my, uh, sorry, yes, but my goodness, how, how this other team responds, the rest of this team is just absolutely fighting for each other. Yeah, they really are. And Guac has adjusted his play style now. He's no longer frontlining as this Roadhog. He's in the back line, so he can offer some peel for his own backline. But right there, ACU goes down to a quick headshot from Agent Double M7. And now Guac has to pull out the whole hog and chipper down Cloud on this Reinhardt. Agent Double M7 going as well, but a big death blossom from Litland finds the Zenyatta from Boise State and the Diva Bomb flies in, but finds nothing. And it's still the Broncos able to stabilize on this first choke. Oof, and again, the way that they have held, they step into hotel just to try to look at that backline, but Plato 
and his team. I mean, even the Reaper, everybody's staying alive. Oh. Rip tire. Oh, oh rip tire right on the tailcoats of that Roadhog hook. Finds three quick kills. And again, St. Ambrose has to reset here. Kel getting the final kill onto Litland for that fight. And Boise State is setting up as aggressive as you can possibly set up on Kings Row. It's the same story that we saw on Havana. And right now the Broncos have a lot of ultimates to work with. And St. Ambrose doesn't have a lot of attacking ultimates here. That's what I'm seeing. Blizzard comes out on statue. But not much there. Does pick the junk rat, but still, now they're gonna go to point. Wild's gonna end up finding a kill with that shatter too, and now he's just in an absolute brawl with Plato in this hotel. You never see Reinhardt's end up playing out fights right there, and St. Ambrose is getting some progress here on this point. But Boise State, they're the most aggressive team I've ever seen, Jaren. So they might get back and contest this. I'm really not too sure. Guac's getting in the mix on Roadhog in the back, but they don't get a foot on the point, so this one will go the way of St. Ambrose. The cart comes out of the garage, and now St. Ambrose has a long road ahead of them. Absolutely, and I tell you what, Yelk, this is one of my favorite types of Overwatch. The Brawl Comp, two Titans as Reinhardt's meet in the middle of the street. This is exactly what I signed up for. That certainly is oh! the Maywall right there. Ends up proving the Plato's advantage. He's already got the help that he needs. Kel comes through with that death plus, which erases as a rose. And that's going to be St. Ambrose back to spawn again as they chase Litland down through that hotel. But still some progress made on this point, and it's going to be St. Ambrose coming back in with what looks like a Death Blossom coming up very soon, as well as a Coalescence. But Boise State has a great alt bank of their own. And again, it's so demoralizing as a team to be able to win the point. You think you're going to get some momentum, and the first time they push in, just domination. Uh, I mean, but you have to give it to Guac. Oh, a massive shatter! <laughs> Oh, Shatter puts my. two on their backs, and that's immediately a race as a rose cloud. And Alyssa going down. Plato goes up and just puts his hand right on that spawn door. And this is just an absolute tank difference we're seeing here on King's Row. This Ryan Roadhog composition is not one you see work very well, but these tanks are so scary, so threatening for the Broncos. Guac is on the high ground, and he is an absolute menace. Oof. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I Listen, I've casted here at the NECC. I've been blessed to cast some other tournaments like you have as well. But this this Boise State team is the best team I've ever seen. As the rip tire shatter, maybe some momentum here. No oh shatter. my goodness! Oh right my on. god! Ooh. Whole hog comes Who's out. Plato, whose hands are these, Plato? You're not supposed to have shatter that quickly. Wow. Oh my god! This is all the space being taken away from oh. the Broncos. Oh, hold on to Alyssa, and they've got them pinned here, Jaren. They can't get out. Oh my gosh. Again, not only was I saying it before when all that went down, but this Boise State team is the best team I've ever seen. Yeah, these tanks right now are all on their own. They've got no supports with them backing them up. It's just the tanks able to support themselves. They don't have any healing capabilities until they poke toward the line of sight of their supports. And you're really just seeing some independent play from these players on Boise State with almost no fear. They're able to go up toe-to-toe -to -toe 1v6 with St. Ambrose and know they've got a window of time to work with before things really get hairy. Goblin goes in with a rocket punch, but now he's Maywalled off and he's not going to make it out alive. Oh man, Plato's up trying to make the play and he pins Agent Double M7, but he gets taken out by Litlin and now St. Ambrose has some wiggle room as the card is going to begin to inch forward as Guac goes down to Litlin as well and the death ball from St. Ambrose finally gaining some ground here on King's Row. You have to, right now, if you're St. Ambrose, you have to get as much as you can because we've seen what Boise State does when they regroup. Don't rotate too far to the right. Doomfist back with Junkrat on point. Nano Zenyatta, they break the bank into their support line and a large bagel. He's got to find the pick and he's got to get the Death Blossom out of Whitlam. That's probably the most crucial play out of that interaction. St. Ambrose still moving this cart forward, but now they're a big ultimate down. Still though, the Boise State Broncos, they did use that Nano Boost and the Transcendence comes back just to get out of spawn. Oh my God, a large bagel. That is the cockiest thing I've ever seen a Zenyatta do. He literally uses his ultimate to walk back a little bit faster from the spawn and he's got to find the value and it's gonna be worth it. Kel takes out Cloud and the slam finds nothing and Plato is in with his back against the wall. Buried into the train station. The comes a rip tire. Kel comes through, finds a double kill. Boise State's not done yet. Walk is still a presence on this card. He finds the hook, 
but the B drop able to keep Double M7 alive for just a hair longer. And now Kel and the Zenyatta Large Dago, the last line of defense on the second point for the Broncos. Meteor Strike coming through, unable to find a kill. And Plato is back on the Wrecking Ball. It's five members back for the Broncos versus four members currently on the cart for St. Ambrose. The cart inches 0.57 meters from the finish line of the second point, but it's still contested. Plato slams in, unable to find a kill there, but Goblin is popping off with three in the feed. Litlin goes down, Boise State's got this one. Overtime is already bleeding a large bagel, the last line. And, oh, man, they get it done, Jaron. Man, and I tell you what, let's talk about how frustrating it has to be to play this Boise State Bronco team because you get a little bit of momentum. You start moving the cart. You think that the tanks have been absolutely unbelievable. And then out of nowhere, Goblin makes a switch, brings out the Doomfist, and the Doomfist wreaks pure havoc on the point and ends the match. I mean, my goodness, they can do it from everywhere. Yeah, they really can. And honestly, the play of that entire point was the Zenyatta a large bagel transcendencing out of spawn and getting back there because <laughs> all of his teammates, except for just him and a DPS player, were taken out of the fight. It was just him and I believe it was Kel on the Junkrat. And they were all that was left and they wouldn't have been there unless a large bagel transcended out of the spawn, had that speed boost that he gave himself there. And then he just clinged on to that point with Kel. They didn't let it go. They swapped over to the Doomfist, over to the Wrecking Ball. They had those stall heroes out, and then Doomfist just has that rocket punch ability, which is massive pick potential, and one by one, they came through, and Boise State held it. Absolutely. And listen, if Gail, here's a question, because you are a more experienced Overwatch player than me. If you're in this same situation, you're facing this superior team, and with everything you're going on, what are you telling your team? What can we do differently? I think what you can do differently is uh, play the game a little more like Boise State's playing it. That sounds, you know, a little cliche, but Boise State is a team that peels for each other incredibly well, and I think you have to swap to an off-tank. Maybe like a Zarya, it's probably not going to be enough. Ooh. Diva probably is the right pick, but just something with an ability that can really bail someone out and block a ton of sharp damage that they're trying to put onto them. Right there, double M7 going down early is going to be... Not good for St. Ambrose as they're going to struggle to hold this statue. Litland goes down. He's got no tanks there supporting him. And that's what I'm talking about right there. Boise State would have bailed out that Reaper somehow, some way. We would have seen it. But Litland going down there makes this a six versus four as Boise State is pressuring this hotel. St. Ambrose is back into this corner. They're right on the welcome desk. And this is not a spot you want to be, Darren. They're in the corner, tucked in. Kel finds a kill, blocking the kill on the cloud. And as Alyssa goes down, this first point is going to belong to Boise State. Well, in two times in a row, Cloud took out Plato, Ryan versus Ryan, able to take it out. But like you said, once again, it just able to bail his team out by those DPSs. Oh. oh, what is Guac doing there? No one expects him to be there. He's pushed up all the way and catches St. Ambrose right out of the spawn again. He's the most aggressive tank I've seen in the NECC so far. This is the definition of doing what a tank is supposed to do, which is take space. The payload is over 100 meters of progress behind him, and Guac is playing fearlessly in this train station. And St. Ambrose, they've got to make the move and either pressure him or pressure something else. You can't just go at this with a half amount of effort. The whole hog is popped. The shadow from the Echo oh, Copy is out. Goblin gets the Mandel Blade. Oh, this is kills left, right, and center for the Broncos as they clean up five, make it six, as Litlin is fighting for his life, going down to Kel. And yeah, I mean, it is just a matter of not fully committing on the kills right there because Guac was right in front of you. You had the Lucio speed boost. You just have to know when is time. When you see the green light, you just have to take it. You can't just be on the fence about making moves like committing to a Roadhog. He's not going to let you do it. And right now, I mean, they're tucked in. This is the third point. The payload does not have to go even close to this far, Jaren. No, absolutely. I'm back here at the payload right now and on it, just sitting on it, having a picnic, maybe trying to make some dinner reservations for here in just a little bit, because right now they're about to go on point. No one's even going to get close to touching. This game is over. Yeah, you got the Sombra coming in who's invisible. She'll get a little bit of a foot on the point, but... With no backup, it's going to be awfully tough. ACU is engaged in duel right now, and Double M7 does eventually go down. So that is going to be 2-0 for the side of Boise State as this cart goes Ooh. into the second point finish line. Just like that, BSU is up 2-0. What do you think? What do you think the play of the game is? Call it before it comes. Go. Oh, well, the 
Overwatch play the game? Oh, uh, it's got to be a Death Blossom. I lied. It's a big ah. blizzard. Oh, uh, at, yeah, double up seven. No, he did wow. have. He did have Not that master play first point from the high ground. Nice headshot onto ACU, but you don't see a lot of play of the games where the guy getting the play has to tuck into his own spawn right there, but another nice headshot on the Kel, <laughs> so pretty clean work from the Ice Queen herself. Absolutely. I, I, I think May is fantastic. I love that character. Uh, I tell you what, uh, I'm... I almost feel a little worn worn out because this has been, uh, and I don't, you know me, everybody complains that I talk too much, but I am just at a loss for words right now, Yelk, at the amount of domination that I've seen. Yeah, I mean, St. Ambrose, they're in, they're in some tough shoes right now. I would not want to fill them if I was them. Um, I've competed in a lot of esports tournaments too, and I've never been on the best team. I've never been on a team that's like Boise State. And when you go up against, you know, the best player or the best team in your tournament, you're always trying to learn from them. So I'm sure they're going to take something from this game, watch the VOD codes back, watch the replays. And hopefully, you know, their tanks learn a little something from Plato and Guac, how to take some space on Roadhog, how to make that Roadhog comp even work, because we haven't seen it from St. Ambrose. We're seeing them try to answer it with other things right now that just aren't quite as effective. But you will kind of just kind of see the, the differences in your game versus the other team you know, on a team level and an individual level, how much value you get out of your heroes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that did not take long as we will see. I mean, Boise State will take this win and move up in the standings. But as of right now, you know, they're not going anywhere. But this next map, l listen, as we're going to focus and switch things, first of all, the first thing I want you to talk about, can we go ahead and speak how we have a new game mode? We're going to play a little bit differently, and maybe this can swing San Ambrose way. Yeah, so we've got control here on Lijiang Tower. And this is, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Overwatch, this game mode can be linked similarly to King of the Hill, which is both teams spawn at the exact same time. There's no defending advantage. Nobody spawns first and gets a look at the map first. They come out of the spawn at the exact same time and they race to the center of the map and control this center point here. And it's three points. So what that's going to be is a different look entirely, like a different map within the map itself to give us three rounds of control if need be. The first team to get two points captured by holding them for a total of 100 seconds will be the victor. And we're seeing a wonky comp right now, Jaron, from Boise See, State. Are they going to leap spawn with Bastion? I, it, I, I think so. I think they're going to teleport out, put the Bastion up, and just rain down the pain but you know let's see because we can teleport from the other side junk rat be able to do some damage but let's get into it right now final round let's go walk already closing the distance in on the front line but passively oh. backing off making some space for his bastion goblins up in the crow's nest raining bullets in but he's taken out by jarek's damage orb and that is a big window created for saint ambrose as kells were moved by double m7 Plato fighting for his life. One versus five on the point. Battered by Cloud and taken out of the equation by a hammer swing. Now it's just a large bagel bouncing around on the point. He's still got Guac. Massive pick potential still in play, but as Bagel goes down, Guac is the final presence here for Boise State around the outside of the map. And it looks like he's not going to win this duel against Cloud. Well, and they tried to make the play. They tried to get a it's not they tried to get a little cute with it, let's be honest. They tried to put that in there. But it just didn't work. But right now they stick with it. They leave the Bastion out there. I mean, they're they're kind of playing with their food a little bit here, Jaren. That's what I think. I think they know that they're up 2-0, and this can be a little fun map if they want it to be. But I still think Goblin is trying his hard out on Bastion. He's not made any mistakes so far. A little unlucky that first fight when he got taken out. But he's going on incredibly smart flanks right now. Like on the left side, he's making all the room in the world as he takes out double M7. Not alive for long, though, as Cloud erases him and finds a big shatter onto Plato. He's now got the orb slapped on him, trying to keep him alive. Block finding a kill around the perimeter. Plato getting the fire strike onto Cloud. And this one is swinging the Broncos way as Alyssa is taken down by Kel. And Azura Rose finally removed by Plato. And this one's going to flip. Wow. And again, Yelk, we've said it. I don't know how many times we can say this, but as much as you'd like to think that Boise State has top tier players and that we know that they do, but this team plays together as a team. Yeah, they really do. Even when you don't see all six of them together, even when it's just two of them together, you know that those two guys are going to be bailing them out 
like to no end. They will use their entire kit on their hero to just make some room, buy some time, get some support to the guy next to him. And they're not letting anyone on their team go down easily. And it's a total team effort there. It's not really coming down to individual skill, being able to outmaneuver anyone. It really is a team effort where everyone just puts their resources into their teammates. And right here, we get two quick kills on the cloud and Jarek, Alyssa, and Azura Rose go down. The point flips only briefly as Boise State will regain control as it starts to tick up here. And St. Ambrose, you know, they get the flip they're proven that they can capture this point on Li Zhang. They're currently winning this game, and this is the best we've seen them play so far. Absolutely. And I just tell you what, Yelk, I love that play right there from Plato from the top rope with the shatter. That was unbelievable. Now from the top turn, Buckle, that's right. The Transcendence on the right side, only to keep the Bastion up. Diva Bomb sent in right atop his head, and he's taken out by Alyssa's Bomb. Cal getting that Rocket Punch kill onto Double M7, but a large bagel goes down to Litlin. Now the DPS finding another kill as Litlin is removed. Block getting the kill onto Jarek, and Plato removed down as Cloud wins the Rhine battle outright. Now it's just the tanks for St. Ambrose as they're trying to claim the rest of this space here away from the Broncos. They've still got to deal with Guac, and he finally gets removed by the Junkrat from St. Ambrose. Now Alyssa's taking a lot of space here on the right side, trying to get it away from Kel's possession on this Doomfist, and he's battered into a corner by Cloud. And now Goblin popping the bash and all, making something happen on the tank, makes ooh, a lot of room here. He's up on the high ground, finds one, finds two. And it's still Boise State's point to lose as they've got a lot of these resources spread around the point. Off angling all around St. Ambrose. They're going to remove members one by one and flip this one back. 89% and going up. 10 seconds left of this round. Jaron, I don't know if anyone on St. Ambrose makes it back. I don't think they do, especially because Boise State has put the, circled the wagons and headed to the spawn. Well, the Reaper's going to get there. Yeah, Litlin barely there. He's hanging on by the skin of his pants, putting as much damage as he can into the Guac and does dodge Whoa. the hook, but Guac is just playing with his food right here. Plato comes through with the BM shatter and pins him right into the center pillar. Doofus alts Kel finding a kill right there onto the center pillar, and the whole hog will seal the deal here on the first point of Li Zhang as the Rose are victorious on this point. You have to tell me that. Ladies and gentlemen, holy moly, what a play. Wow. What a play. I mean, especially for, I mean, Boise State at this point, I mean, what else can we say besides the fact that, I mean, it's pure aggression. And I think I've said it earlier, but tonight just reassured me all roads to the national championship lead through Boise, Idaho. Yeah, and I think we're seeing a little something from St. Ambrose here, which uh, is a little unfortunate because I think they have played their best Overwatch today, and it is a bit of a team difference we're seeing as Boise State has jumped so far out in front. But player of the match so far to me has got to be either Glock or Kel, just the absolute difference makers in this one for Boise State. Glock on the Roadhog is doing things that I have not seen anyone else do in the NECC so far. But right now, it's going to be two members of Boise State, Plato and Kel finding the first bloods of this round of Li Jiang and Goblin in the back line, punching right into the Diva of St. Ambrose and shooing her away from the point. Looks like the Broncos are going to get this first capture. Ooh, absolutely. And, and without even thinking about it, and now the issue becomes how do you take it away? They have it in their grasp. And how do you come? This point, I, Gelk, I do believe that this point is a little more difficult to take than the other. Yeah, it definitely is the walls that just kind of create the corners around this point make it a bit more of a nightmare for tanks to maneuver in because there's a lot of spam damage that can get done onto them. And Goblin on this Doomfist pick for Boise State has a lot of tight corridors to bash St. Ambrose into, but he gets removed early as he gets taken up by Double M7. But it looks like Boise State is just rolling deep in this one. They're again up into the spawn, just really starting to play with St. Ambrose as a large bagel gets another boop kill on the Jarek just all the way around the outside of the map, giving up no room. Oh, and massive, massive. Oh, and the Doomfist just giving it to him. Here it comes, the Meteor Strike. Meteor Strike maybe just trying to set up a play here. Takes his time in the sky. A large bagel goes down in the meantime to double M7. And Goblin comes in from the skybox and removes Litlin from the equation. Now the tanks of Boise State are in this choke. Full force, but Goblin goes down and Guac falling as well. The Roadhog and the Reaper. 
Yo, doing a lot of work right now, but Plato on the point slams four down. And two kills come through. The support's removed for St. Ambrose. Alyssa's bomb will find Cal. Plato goes down as well. A large bag with a final presence left on the point for Boise State. Taken down and the point flips. And Jaron, right now, St. Ambrose, how do they keep control? Uh, if, if it's me, you have to try to stay grouped up a little bit. I mean, the, oh, that's the only thing I could have. The success you've had today is when you're together as the, oh my goodness, the Ryan gets slept on point. Azura Rose drops the beat by St. Ambrose. A little bit of time, but Guag's whole hog makes it absolutely a nightmare to be on point right now if you're anyone on St. Ambrose. The pin from Cloud unsuccessful. The anti nade lands onto him and he gets taken up by a large bagel. Now Plato is in the driver's seat, swinging his hammer back and forth, taking everything away from St. Ambrose. Fire strikes down Azura Rose and cleaves through Alyssa Goblin, eventually confirming that kill onto the Baby Diva. And this one's going to go back in Boise State's direction. As they've got to remember to capture the point, they step off it for a second there. I mean, it's... You... Not you don't it, even if you take out the Reinhardt, you have to worry about the nades. You have to worry about the boop that comes out. That I mean, there's so many things that are so dangerous about this Boise State team. Yeah, there are right now. I'm looking to see what Plato does with this final Earth Shatter at the buzzer. Looking to see the Reinhardt drop another big slam into here. He usually saves it for when St. Ambrose threatens the point very close, and right now he's doing just that by remaining on the point Ooh. despite the fight happening away from him. A large bagel getting the boop onto Azura Rose is huge. Overtime beginning to tick down. Plato does not find the shatter he's looking for. Cloud taking out Ace. He makes this anyone's game. As St. Ambrose still clings alive, but with Cloud and Litwin taken down, overtime will begin to dwindle. Diva is de mech de-suited. Alyssa is out of that mech. And that's got to be it. Looks like Boise State has got to take this one home as they are looking strong, just like they have all season, Jaron. Man, and again, from the start of the season to the end of the season, uh, my producer will tell me if I'm right, but I believe they've only dropped one map all season long. And I mean, it might be two, but one or two maps all season. Let's see this Reinhardt play of the game. Yeah, this is an individual play right here as he's able to take out Litlin all on his own. He uses that ultimate purely to win that duel. And just winning that duel, removing that burst damage from St. Ambrose, is going to buy Boise State that point. Absolutely. That was... Oof. I mean, Yelk, I, I'm starting... I think you and I are starting to become friends, and I thought we were going to get a little bit more time to spend with each other tonight, but Boise State makes quick work of tonight's match. Yeah, this one, uh, this one was this one was speedy. I mean, the Broncos <laughs> were in full canter today. That's for sure. Oh, I see, see, you did the canter line. See, I see what you did there. See what I see what you did there, guys. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight again. I mean, Boise State, the number one seed in the Champions Division. This team comes out and gets a 3-0 victory. But again, Yelk, I mean, let's give a little bit of kudos to St. Ambrose because this is not – we know what the task was coming into this match, and I do think there were times where they showed a valiant effort. Yeah, they played some good Overwatch, especially there on Li Zhang. And for a few fights there on King Zero, they were able to capture that first point. So they've clearly got an ace in their sleeve that Boise State's not aware of, where if SAU can kind of just harness that every single game and get consistent with that level of play, they can take a map off any team. Absolutely. They 100% can. And again, wow. I mean, I'm over the top impressed. Guys, thank you so much. I want to give a big shout out to everyone in the Twitch chat. You guys have been absolutely awesome tonight. Big poggers to you guys because you have just littered that chat with some cool stuff. I've been over here chuckling as, as we're in between games at some of the stuff that goes on in that chat, man. Having a great time with it. And again, follow us on social media as well. If you, if you are new here in the Twitch chat, go ahead and hit that follow button. Join our community. And of course, uh, follow us on NEC CC games that's N E C C games on Twitter and Instagram for live updates, announcements, and giveaways right there on our platform. And I tell you what, Yelk, it was another successful night, man. And I'm so grateful that you took some time out of your day to come spend it with me here and, and do some college overwatch.
Another good one in the books, Jaron. I mean, I was looking forward all day when I found out that I was going to get to cast this Boise State team. They did not disappoint my expectations. I'm excited to see what they can do with the rest of this tournament. And it was a pretty good look for SAU, you know, first time around either. You know, you don't want to go up against the best team every time, but I think this game is going to prepare them every bit they need to be for their next matchup. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And ladies and gentlemen, we have one more week of regular season action and we will switch and get ready for the NECC playoffs. It is going to be fantastic. One last time, I want to say thank you to our partners. Thank you to our friends at Helix Esports for all that they do. Thank you to our friends at HyperX, some of the best gear in gaming, now comes to the NECC. And of course, our linear TV partner, you might be watching live right now on ESTV. And if you're not, you can now download it on Samsung TV Plus, the Roku channel, Vizio, plenty of options where you can download that platform and watch esports action from around the globe 24-7. And man, we big shout out to our friends at ESTV as the NECC playoffs will be live on ESTV. For our commissioner, Jacob Van Ryan, for our executive producer, Caleb Gluby, and our director of esports, we thank them for all they do. For everyone behind the scenes, all the interns, all the staff here at the NECC, my name is Jaron Bell. That is Yelk Reb. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And until next time, stay beautiful, stay blessed. GG's and we are the NECC. We'll see you guys next time. Later chat.